We are in the middle of learning how to capture ProRes RAW and it seems as though that the more light there is in your scene, the better it is for your production. Today, and I'm hoping whether we get it right today, we're going to go through the process of get, trying to get this right by using pulse colors within the Ninja. Stick around. Before we get started, I want to show you my brand new items I purchased so I can make this production a lot easier. It's a 10 footer HDMI slim cable that can connect from the Ninja to the Z6. Now the Z6 still has a even, an even slimmer cable that I'm connecting it, so that's why I also need a coupler. So you can still keep the lightweight and functionality without trying to damage the connection within the Z6. I'm still using that extra slim HDMI cable there and then at the bottom of it connecting it with this coupler to this cable. The items I got, they come two in a pack. So there was two couplers and two 10 footers and all of it turned out to be less than $20 I believe. I'll have the links to the items in the description below. I've been tackling this. We've all been waiting to get it right. I've been waiting to get it right. And I have two cameras right now. I have my DA10 right here and the Z6. The DA10 is pointing directly here at the Ninja 6. So we know exactly what it is that we're doing. So let's start this right. And let's go back a couple of days to the actual settings that I had. Where some of you guys have told me that even though I claimed that there was no noise in the scene. There seemed to be noise. And yeah, and there was noise. So let's try to see if we can eradicate that. Let's use the false colors within the Ninja 5 to see if we can acquire better footage. The specs for day, day 4 are as follow. They're right here and they're going to remain there the whole time. The other difference there is between this today and that day is the fact that I'm shooting in DX mode. So I'm shooting in crop factor right now because I'm using the 35 millimeter lens to simulate what that 50 look was of back then. Where does the gray card lie on the Luma Wave scale? I have this here and as you can see here our Luma Wave scale for this lies somewhere around between the 25s and the 35s. So based on, upon that we see that our noise levels for that day were true. That it was noisy. We were underexposed a little bit. Using the gray card with false colors, it's much better because it shows you exactly where you would be. And this shows you that you are between 25 and 47. It's a lot more accurate and it's a lot easier to read than perhaps the Luma Wave. Based upon this, day four and everything, we know that this scene is grainy. And once we take this to the computer later, you'll, you guys will see that this is actually perhaps the wrong exposure for our scene. Yesterday, I had a different setting. All I did was up the light to 80%. We are at 80%. Same settings. Here are the settings, except for this light is not at 80%. Okay. False tones for our gray card. Now the, our gray card says that we are red and and gray. So that puts us right above here. It tells us that our scene right now is between 50 and 58. It's between 48 and 58. That's what this thing is telling us right now. It would be better to capture with this light uh, setup than it is with my prior setup. And it still seems that this corner seems to be touching the zeros and so is my shirt. But now let's turn on all the lights and we're going to up the ISO a little bit on the Z6. We up the ISO on the Z6 to 640. The settings are still the same. And our light is still at 80. We want is to make sure that this light has the most light shooting at me. I'm going to bring this light also to 100. So it's going to go to its max level. So this room is a lot brighter than it, it is at any one point that I've filmed in the past. But our Luma Wave shows that we are not touching anywhere now. We're hovering over zero everywhere on our Luma Wave here, which is great. That's what we want. We want that. Let's see if this makes for a greater scene. Our gray card now says that we are over a hundred. It's quite high actually. If we go to our false colors and take that off and we put the gray card on, we are between 44 and 58. That's not that where our Luma Wave was telling us. Luma Wave told me that I was way overexposed, somewhere between 200 or so. Like I said, I don't know if this is right. All I know that when I get it to the computer, I'll find out if this was right or not. 100% all around, lights all around with this card. 
as you will be able to see most of the scenes have noise incorporated into it. Is this based on the ISO? Don't know. But out of all of these, the one that has the least amount of noise is the high ISO of 640 with 100% lights all around. That's because there's more light introduced into the shadows. Therefore, the amount of noise produced is a lot finer and it's not an, an issue. Those are our results for today. But one thing we've learned is that false colors might be your best way to go when it comes to capturing and acquiring the proper settings for your camera. And that's because it is completely different than LumaWave. False Colors has a set scale that regardless in what capturing uh, mode you're in, it gives you true tones. And for that matter, it seems as though the gray card always is where it's supposed to be. Tomorrow we'll be talking about this again, but we're going to try all of these settings in its native ISO of 100 and push it all the way to 400 and bump up the f-stops to see if there's a difference there if we go back down in ISO if that will give us better quality of image meaning less noise if we do so then that means that perhaps ProRes RAW in this camera it hasn't been optimized to be used as it should be so let's try that tomorrow and I'll see you at 5 p.m. see ya